Badger to Medicine. The name comes from translations of our, our area. Badger Creek, Misinski, Sisachta uh, was our traditional name for that river. And to Medicine, Natyukyukan, or Natyukyukasi, came from an encampment of two medicine lodges that were pitched on that river. Since the beginning of time, that area has been prominent within our people. And it's not that Badger to Medicine is the only sacred site within our territory. It's the last sacred site. A lot of our areas have been taken from us, uh, but to us it's our holy land. It is our Vatican, you know. It, it holds the resources that maintain all the values of Blackfoot culture. Badger to Medicine is a grocery store for hunting and gathering food sources. It also can be a medical center in our medicines, and that can still be harvested within the Badger areas. Healing the spirit, duck, and healing wounds of post-traumatic stress, things like that, and maintaining our identity as Blackfoot people. We can never say that we own land, and that's something in Blackfoot that doesn't exist. Our origin stories come from this area. Um, so because of that, it's more proper to say that I'm from this area, I'm part of this area, and then therefore this area is part of me. Protecting that area is protecting our body. It's if Chief Mountain is the head, then Badger to Medicine is our heart. The Badger to Medicine is currently under the U.S. Forest Service jurisdiction. This area, as well as part of what is now known as Glacier National Park, collectively makes up what is often called the Seeded Strip. Eighteen seventy, we had the Baker Massacre, which was 250 plus women, children, and old men that were killed by the U.S. Cavalry. And in 1883-1884, we had the starvation winter. And at that time, there were no bison left on the plains. And we were starving to death. And over, I think, 600 Blackfeet starved to death in old agency. And so by the agreement of 1896 came around, basically, there was mineral interest and the government and outside interests wanted it from the Blackfeet. According to my history, it was leased. We leased it. But according to the government, it was sold. And those were paid out in annuities that were to give us food, basically, from starving to death at the time. So it was made under duress. And it was under great hesitation that leaders at the time did what they felt they had to do. They didn't find a lot of silver and gold interests in there. And eventually it turned into Glacier National Park. And part of that agreement we made was we would retain hunting, fishing, and all of our rights, we'd still access it. And it was just the rocks, basically, is what we leased. So what became Glacier Park kind of eliminated a lot of those rights and we were kind of kept out of it. The Cedar Strip kind of comprises that Badger to Medicine part and that didn't come become a park. Our elders at the time and people interested at the time fought those oil leases. They felt that it was too pure, it was too culturally significant, and it was too special to drill for oil. They fought and they, they won for the most part, but still it can be reversed and we know that, so we never hold our breath too much on it. You have younger generations, I think, picking up the fight. We still feel that it's ours. The Blackfeet people felt it was taken from us wrongfully. The tribe is seeking, at the minimum, co-management of the area where we have our own you know, assurances and, and, and management of it, but also just the return of it. We were created with everything here, and it's our responsibility to make sure it all continues with us under our guidance. The Blackfeet have mastered this land for thousands of years. I really hope that justice prevails, and at least one of those things that we were wronged can be righted at this point in time. And it has to, you know, there's no other way. And that's always the fight of every generation, is to get a little bit further back from what was taken. And right now, of course, it's our language and culture and our history being taught in the schools. And, you know, now it's the return of the badger itself, you know, the Cedar Strip. Growing up, I'd ask my mother, I said, those mountains, are those ours? She said, yeah, those are our mountains. And I was like, oh, great. I can't wait to go back in there. It's so beautiful. Much later when I grew up and I learned that day, it was actually <laughs> owned by the U.S. government as Glacier National Park. At that point, I was like, oh, my mother lied to me, you know. But in her eyes, they are ours. They will always be ours. Not that we own it like from a Western perspective, but we belonged to those mountains as they belong to us. Spiritually, we're connected to them. We will always be connected. Our DNA intertwines with the rivers and the mud and the animals, you know. We know that. 
Maintaining that connection for families too is really important. 